preach, I would love to just give the mic to Anna and just let her uh, release a word over you guys, a word over your church, and uh, just see what the Lord wants to do. Yeah, well, again, thank you guys so much for having us. We feel so humbled and honored to be here. Truly, your pastors and your whole leadership team are really a gift to you from the Lord. Um, and I, I really felt like the Lord wanted me to tell you, like, there's... There's so many of you in this room right now, and some of you may be newer, some of you maybe have been running with them for a really long time, but, you know, we live in 2023, and, and it's an age where you have access to any and all content that you want, um, and a lot of us have our favorites, but I want to just deposit something to you and let you know that what, what Ethan and Lydia carry and the word that they have for you, the uh, weekly, the week after week, time after time, like through counseling, through um speaking up here, like the word that the Lord gives them is specifically for you. We can, we can get little pick-me-ups from the internet and from different things, and those are all good, but those words are for those houses. The word that comes from them is for this house, and it's going to pertain to your life. And if you can receive them, if you can receive that from them, then it's going to transform your life. If you truly take it to heart and not say, well, but so-and-so said this on the internet, and I don't know, I don't uh, No. What they have for you is from the Lord for you as a gift. So receive them. Um, but I was asking the Lord, I was praying about this church, and I got to share a little bit with the leadership team last night um, this word that the Lord gave me, but I can't, st I can't get away from it, so I want to just release it over you guys. And the Lord said that this house is where he is making the bitter waters sweet. He's making the bitter waters sweet again. And I just want to read you um, Exodus 15, um, verse 22. It starts and it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Everybody say, no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, that's why the name was Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Say, made sweet. Made sweet. Your pastors have cried out to the Lord. The Lord has given them clear vision, clear direction. They, they, he's, the Lord has shown them the tree, the stick to throw into those bitter waters, and it's been made a sweet place. So I want to encourage you that any area of your life that may seem still a little bitter, release it to the Lord. Surrender it to the Lord. Bring it to your leaders and, and, and go through it with them. But know that this house, you can drink from this house, and it's a safe place. You will not get sick from the waters of this house. So I just release that in you and bless it in Jesus' name. You being a part of a community is crucial to your success in the kingdom. And when I say the word community, sometimes our mind goes to the town that we live in, uh, you know, the people that we see around and about town. I'm actually talking about the people that you spend most of your time with, the people that you are truly uh, doing life with. Because I believe if, if you show me the five people that you spend most of your time with, I can give you a little bit of an idea of what the next five years is going to look like for you. Now, when I say that, the person that you need to be spending the most time with is actually Christ. We can't just say that the Holy Spirit is our best friend and not actually speak to him like he's our best friend. Because he is with you. One of the biggest lies that you can believe is that you're alone. If you've truly given your life to Jesus, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus, in that moment you were filled with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. How exciting is that? You are actually one with God. There's not one day that goes by that you're not with him, that you're not in him. So what does it look like? I guarantee you, if all of you started your day from that perspective, all of your earthly relationships would benefit from that relationship. Guys, open up our eyes. God, open up our eyes to see this. Let this not just be a good word that we hear. I'm all about the goosebumps, man. I love the goosies. 
Or what happens when we don't feel the goosebumps? I'm here to tell you, even when you don't feel the goosebumps, he's here. Even when you wake up and you don't feel like he's close to you, he's closer to you than the very skin on your bones. Because he's within you. But 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says, Bad company corrupts good character. It's truly important with, with who we're spending time with. But check this. God is so for community that he himself is one. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what does it look like for you to be welcomed into that community? I feel like when we take full advantage of our relationship with God, he teaches us what it looks like to do life. He, he teaches us what it looks like to have healthy relationships. You were created out of community for community. 1 John 1, 7 says this. This is a message we have heard from Jesus and now declare to you. Watch this. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all so we are lying if we say we have fellowship with god but go on living in spiritual darkness this stuff is sharp guys we are not practicing the truth but if i love the ifs of the bible i circle ifs i highlight ifs because it's like if you do this i'll do this if you knock i'll answer the door if you seek me, you will find me. Finding God is up to you being willing to seek. He is the door. Knock and he will answer. Even if you don't feel like you have a loud knock in you, I believe a faint knock gets the attention of heaven. Just a little knock. Maybe you don't feel like you have the energy to knock loudly, but God is just looking you for to, to, to just slightly just, he's like, I hear that knock. And I get this picture of Jesus being on the other side of that door, so excited to answer it. Like, man, I want to, oh, oh, nope, they didn't knock yet. So if we knock, he will answer that door. So let's go back. But if we are living in the light, not just visiting the light on Sundays, not just experiencing the light at a conference, but if you live, if you are living in the light as God is in the light, then you will have fellowship with each other. What? And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. For you to have healthy relationships with the people around you, you must have a healthy relationship with the one you are one with. If this relationship is off, all of these relationships will be off. If you find yourself struggling to have good, solid connection with the people around you, I would challenge you to ask yourself, how is this connection? Because this dictates everything. If this is off, your marriage will be off. If this is off, your relationship with your children will be off. You will struggle if this relationship is off. But if this relationship is in right alignment, you'll be ready for your assignment. <laughs> I don't even know what I said. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I love you. But true fellowship with one another, it, it requires for you to have true relationship with God. If I just communicated with my wife when it was convenient, it would affect our relationship. If I'm only celebrating and praising God when he answers my prayers, then my praise has conditions. It's if you do this, I'll give you praise. When I'm here to tell you he's worthy of your praise every single day. No matter what today looks like, no matter what tomorrow has in store for us, he is worthy of your praise. No matter what. No matter what life can throw at you, he's worthy of your praise. But if your relationships, if you feel like your relationships are in a dark place, then reevaluate your relationship with light. I love that connection to, to God is light. He is light. Let him shine around the people around you. God is still creating. 
He's a very creative God, and he wants to actually to continue to create through you. He wants to use your mouth to create life. You know how many times this verse gets misquoted? It's, it's a life and death are held in the power of the tongue, brother. It's actually death and life are held in the power of the tongue. Because you were born to speak death, you have to train yourself to speak life. It's written death first. Because you have to get reborn to declare life. That no matter what I see with my natural eyes, I'm going to declare life. No matter what is going on around me. So let's jump into uh, Acts chapter 2. Ooh, love me some Acts chapter 2. Acts 2, jumping in uh, verse 42. I'm reading out the New Living Translation, and then I'm going to kind of compare it to the New King James. But I feel like the New Living just kind of gives a clear picture of what, 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 what's being said here. So all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all. Say all. And, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything that they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. How kingdom. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Isn't that a good word? If we look at this and we see some of those verses in the New King James, I want to pick out some of those words because when we read, then those who gladly received his word were baptized, that word gladly is asmenos and it's with joy. So what does it look like for you to come together on a Sunday morning to hear biblical teachings and actually come into the room with a heart of joy to receive his word? Not with a heart of critiquing. Not with the heart of you pronounced that wrong, that, that word wrong. You stuttered a little bit there. Well, praise God that God can use a stutterer. <laughs> praise God. But are we coming together with a heart full of joy to say, God, show me something new today? Open up my eyes to see something new today. Every time I'm reading scriptures, and there may be scriptures I've read over and over and over and over, I'm asking God, God, give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear. Show me something I've never seen before. Because I promise you, this is a beautiful mystery that can be solved if we just choose to spend time with the word. Come on, somebody. Asmenos. Love that. And then in the verse when it says, and that day there was about 3,000 souls that were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. That word steadfastly is proskitero, which is to be devoted or constant to one, consistent to one. Do you live a life devoted, devoted to one? And that one being Christ. Where every decision you make, you actually make with God, what do you want me to do? When we were in youth ministry, we'd have youth come up to us and I'm about to graduate. I don't know what to do. I'm like, what does God want you to do? I don't know. I never asked. Well, please ask. Please ask before you just do something for the sake of doing it. Because we're either dead to ourself or we're not. You're either dead or you're not. Last time I checked, a dead person doesn't have opinions. We're either dead to ourselves and alive in him or we're not. It's, it's now no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in and through me. So, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, where do you want me to live? God, where do you want me to work? Come on, somebody. But healthy relationships will require consistency. Consistency. Maybe you're like, man, I want to read the Bible. I want to be in the word every day. Well, it takes about 20 days to even create a habit. So why don't you just force yourself, no matter how you feel that day, I'm going to read this. I'm going to get in this word so it becomes a habit. So that on day 21, you're waking up and without even thinking about it, you're reaching for your word. And you're developing a habit with the Lord. 
And then when it says, in the breaking of bread and in prayer, then the fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. That word fear, guys, is phobos, and it actually means terror. To tread in terror. What? We love talking about the love of God, and I'm all about the love of God. I have love tattooed on my wrist just in case I forget. That's who I am. I'm a loved son, period. No matter what today looks like, no matter how well this service goes, I leave here loved. I leave here fully accepted. Fully in Christ. That's who I am. But how many know the church needs to embrace the healthy fear of the Lord again? Well, we're not doing things because we're like, we don't want anything to affect our relationship with him. I don't want things like shame and guilt and condemnation to come into my life and make me think like that separates me from God because the truth is it doesn't even separate you from God. Because Romans 8, 38 says, I'm convinced. Paul says, I'm convinced. The Amplified says, I'm persuaded beyond doubt that nothing, say it with me, nothing. Pull out the Greek, pull out the Hebrew. It's nothing. That's what it means. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. So even when you mess up, Nothing can separate you from the love of God. I remember when, we, when I was youth pastoring in Red Bluff, I had a little guy in, in the youth group, and he came in late. He was running late, and it was an older building, and when he walked in, it kind of the floor kind of creaked, and he was kind of trying to not be noticed, like, oh, man, I'm late. And he came in, and it was like, poor kid, like, hey, he's here. And I heard the Lord say, man, I never want my kids to think they have to tiptoe into my presence, even if they're late. I want them to know that that's where I want them. That's where they belong. (laughs) Wow. Moving ahead, where it says, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all, as everyone that had need. So continuing daily, keyword daily, with one accord in the temple, with one accord, homothamadon, is that word. They came together, with one passion. That's what that means to be with one accord is they came together with one passion being him. What does it look like when we gather together and our only focus is him? I'm here to tell you, you guys are doing a pretty good job making it very clear that we're here for him and him alone. It's all about what he wants. It's all about worshiping him, and he will lead you. When, you, when you. when your focus is him, he will make all your paths straight. I promise you. But I love that with one passion. And I love this because if you just read this, what happens when believers devote themselves to God's word, have fellowship with one another, share meals together, and pray with one another? Salvations and increase. It says the Lord added to their company. The Lord did. He said, if you do this, I'm going to do this. If you make this your number one desire, you don't have to worry about church growth. It just happens. Because the people around you are like, I need what you have. I don't need what you say you have. I need what you have. Because your life looks different. When I see you, I see Christ. I don't see you. Tell me more of what you know. And then things just begin to happen. Things begin to happen. I know you guys just moved from one building to the next. This ain't going to be big enough. Sorry for the leadership team. (laughs) I think you can get creative with strategy and the property and how we can utilize every little inch and space, and you can get creative. But what God is doing here is so unique because your eyes are so fixed on him, and he will continue to draw his sons and daughters to this place because he trusts this family. Man, this is good. I'm excited. Come on, somebody. Hebrews 10, 25 says, And let not us neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I'm not here to tell you when the Lord's coming back. I'm here to tell you he's coming back. Are you this? Are you this? You think it's going to work out this way? I'm kind of a pan It's going to pan out. I'm not sure exactly how. I believe that he's coming back. I I believe you should live your life like he's coming back today, but plan like he isn't. 
Why? Because you're going to have nothing to give your children's children's children if you haven't planned and prepared a place for them. Because how many can think of times 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago when you were convinced that he was coming? Guess what he didn't do? Come. The way that you thought. Just, just a little doop. Doesn't really have anything to do with my message, but hey, come on somebody. Do you have to go to church to have a relationship with God? No, but you get to. You get to come to church. You get to be a part of a bride. You get to be a part of the body of Christ. Because when you come and your attention is him, you're worshiping him, you're making him your number one focus, but then what happens is God has such a heart for his children that then you begin to look around the room and then your heart begins to break for the person that's next to you and now you're coming to not be selfish and just receive, but you're here to just pour out. How can I encourage the person next to me? How can I come to church with a, with a, with a motive and a, and, a, and a desire to say, you know what, I'm gonna encourage three people today. I'm gonna ask someone out to lunch. I'm gonna pay for their lunch after church today. I'm actually gonna do life with my church family. I love this. This is what I get really passionate about because I believe the local church is the answer to all the world's problems. The local church being what the local church was always called to be. We were never called to look to the government for assistance. This community should be able to come to the local church. And we should be able to supply them with every need. Why? Because we lack nothing in Christ Jesus. He wants this place to be a warehouse of all of the needs of the community. Come on, somebody. You don't have to go to church just like you don't have to go to the gym. What happens if you go to the gym? You're going to get stronger, aren't you? Not if you just go to the gym, though, and you hang out in the cafe. Not if you just go to the gym and you just you have conversations for, for 20 minutes and, and everyone's starting their workouts, but you, you yourself don't decide to actually get on the bike yourself. How many people come into church every, every Sunday across America and they're just coming, but they're not truly present? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. That hearing is a continual hearing. But your faith will increase by you being in the room and being present. And you choosing to say, you know what, I'm just going to pause this little pocket idol for a moment. Uh oh, he called it a pocket idol. Well, <laughs> an idol is anything you put before the Lord. I can pr promise you there's a lot of people in the room that spend a lot more time with this than you do with the Lord. I, I'm speaking to myself. I, I'm challenging myself. I put myself in that equation because I feel like the only way we're going to grow is if we do something different. You can't do the same thing, live the same life, and expect different results. That's actually the definition of insanity. Come on, somebody. You got to get your face in his book and get your face out of Facebook. <laughs> I say this stuff to my church, too. It's fine. <laughs> but being a part of a local church, it gives you the opportunity to have beautiful relationships with the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27 says, all of you together is Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Look around the room. No one in this room looks the same. And I think that's beautiful. But everyone in this room is, is created in the image and likeness of God. You know what the enemy tries to get us to do? Compare ourselves to one another. Look at the worship team and be like, man, I'm never gonna be good enough. I, I, I'm, I, I'm never gonna be... Uh, uh, good enough to be saying, wow, I'm really a part of this church. No, I promise you, if, if you're a supernatural encourager, that's just as good as a supernatural worshiper. If I looked at Ethan and said, you know what, man, the, the success of, of being a pastor, I have to look exactly like Ethan. I'm robbing the world from the unique expression that only I can manifest because I'm in Christ I'm in him. Ethan's in him. But if I'm trying to look like someone else, I'm actually robbing the world around me from experiencing a facet of God that only I can manifest. So I need you to look in the mirror and fall madly in love with the, the person that you are. So you look in the mirror and say, wow, I love who God's created me to be. Because if we can't look in the mirror and say, God, I love who I am, you can't love your neighbor. 
You're trying to love your neighbor and you're wondering why you're not getting anywhere. It's because your love's not authentic because if you don't love yourself, you can't love your neighbor because we're called to love our neighbor as ourself. The only way you can love yourself is if you're receiving God's love every day. You're not working for it. You're not fasting for it. You're not tithing for it. You're not performing for it. You're receiving his love. God, today, before I do anything, I receive your love. I choose to believe that you love me. God, I choose to believe that when you look down on me, you say, this is my son who I love and who I'm well pleased in. And then you get to start your day from that place of acceptance, not working for acceptance. Because so many of us spend so much time trying to gain God's approval, work for his love, work for his acceptance, when at the end of the day, he's like, I accept you because of what my son did, not because of what you do. We only can do because of what he's done. This is just the simplistic gospel being preached, but there's, we're never going to get away from it. Anytime I try to come up with another sermon, this stuff leaks into it because it's it. Because if you believe right, you'll live right. If you just, if you just believe you're just a, a, a sinner saved by grace and that's who you are, guess what? You're going to sin by faith. If you wake up, wake up every day believing, I'm a sinner and that's who I am, you're going to struggle with sin for the rest of your life when sin has been dealt with at the cross. And now you have the choice to be a slave to righteousness and believe that you're actually righteous. If you believe that you're righteous, I believe you'll manifest righteousness. The Bible says, if you sin, there's an advocate. That word if implies you don't have to. You know how offensive it is to tell, to tell somebody, I haven't sinned today. Well, who do you think you are, Christ? No, I think that I'm possessed by his spirit, though. <laughs> and it's his spirit, and, his, and, and by his strength, I can do all things. Not through my strength, through Matt's strength. I'm a mess. But I'm dead, and he's alive. How many know in this room that temptation itself isn't a sin, guys? Jesus was tempted in all ways, yet he did not sin. You being tempted to sin is not the sin. You stepping into that temptation and choosing to bow to it and choosing to make that voice louder than God's voice, that's sin. Sorry, I, I gotta, come on somebody. Fellowship is essential, guys. This has nothing to do with COVID. But you cannot walk into your church on a, ever, on a weekly basis with a mask on and then wonder why people don't truly know who you are. You can't walk into this room with the mask of happiness. And, and you're pulling up to the church and you're depressed. You truly are dealing with thoughts of suicide. You can't stand who you are. And before you get out of your car, you're like, man, I need to, I got my bag with me. And you, you pull that happiness mask out. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Such a blessing to be here. You know what? God's given us a spirit of discernment. So when you come up to someone that has a spirit of discernment and, and God is prophetically drawing you to someone and you begin to ask them questions, you begin to give them time, you hug them, you embrace them, and you say, how are you? How are you doing? That's a genuine question being asked. And if you're not, if your heart's not postured to be, you know what, I just need to be vulnerable. I need to actually be intimate with the people around me in the sense of this. I can't say intimacy without saying into me you see. Everyone in this room is called to have an intimate relationship with God. Into me you see, God. There's nothing in me that you can't see. I give you permission to look at every little nook and cranny of my heart, God. And if you find anything in me that's not in you, I give you permission to remove it. Because that's not who I'm called to be. Oh, that person really just pushes my buttons. You shouldn't have any buttons because you're dead. I'm not saying you won't struggle. I'm not saying you won't be challenged. But those, those, those moments that those buttons come up, you're like, you know what? That's actually not who I am. I'm called to actually be patient. I'm called to actually be kind. I'm called to be long-suffering <laughs> with the people around me. 
but you're not going to be willing to have intimate, good, healthy relationships with the people in this room if you don't even have a good and healthy, intimate relationship with God. We learn everything from him. He teaches us what it looks like to have healthy connection. But if our connection to the Father is off, like I said in the beginning, all of these relationships will be off. You'll be looking for these people's acceptance. But if you come into this room knowing you're accepted, you're not looking for their acceptance. You know you're accepted. You're not trying to perform for it. You're not trying to serve for it. I want people on my team that have a heart to serve because they want to serve him. Not me. Not a building. Because the last time I checked, we're the church. This is a great building, and it's beautiful, and it's going to be a beacon of hope for this community. And I pray that, that this building gets utilized to be that warehouse, that storehouse for this community, and it will be. But the government can do whatever they want and take whatever they want. You can't take me. And if I find myself ever in prison for it, I'll start a prison ministry. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So if I find myself in a prison, there's freedom there because I'm there, because I'm in Christ. That's not being cocky. That's being confident. We need to be confident with who we are. If you don't know who you are, the world will tell you who you are. The world will try to label you. He's the only one that has the ability to label you. Why? Because you're his creation. <clears throat> Man, I want you guys to have healthy, thriving relationships because I believe that I believe that friendship, this side, on this side of eternity, healthy kingdom friendship is one of the greatest blessings that God could ever give you. Having true healthy friendships, friends that know you, friends that know you're not doing well, even when you tell them you're doing well. They're like, that's cute. Maybe we'll talk about this later. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Romans 12 verse 4 says, Verse four and five says, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same functions, so we have being made one, have being made into one body in Christ and individually members of one another. What aspect do you play? Fall in love with that uniqueness, that expression that only you can do and be. Stop trying to be someone else. You'll never be a good someone else, but you'll be a great you. <laughs> Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Guess what? If you want to be a friend that has the ability to sharpen, you have to be sharp. How do you become sharp? Spending time with him. Worshiping when no one's looking. What, is your, what, is your, what does your life look like when no one else is watching? Because that's, that's the authentic you. The you that, that only God sees is who you truly are. It's not about having the right outfit on Sunday and saying the right things when you're around the right people. I want you desperately to fall madly in love with God so that you fall madly in love with yourself. Because it's actually holy to love yourself because you actually see that you were the joy set before Christ which allowed him to endure the cross. <sighs> We are that joy. What about the cross was joyful? Nothing. No part of, of, of the, the cross was, was fun. But I believe that Jesus was like, this is the only way that we get, the, we get this connection back to our creation. So I'm going to endure this so that I can have relationship with them, not when you die, now. A lot of us, we idolize death. We say, when we die, then I'll be at peace. Last time I checked, you have the peace that passes all understanding here and now on this side of eternity. It doesn't make sense for you to have to have peace that passes all understanding when you're in heaven. No, I need peace that passes all understanding when I'm going to the doctor and the doctors are telling me something that, that doesn't line up with this. And I can look at them and say, man, that's really unfortunate that that's my current experience, but that's not who I am. So I'm now going to start speaking to that diagnosis, and I'm actually going to declare Jesus into this situation. You can tell me all day that you have a chemical imbalance, and that's why you struggle with anxiety and depression. Well, I know someone that can balance your chemical imbalance. You don't have to identify with that chemical imbalance. I did for years of my life and was on medication and, ha and hated myself and, and, and honestly wanted to die. Didn't have the... the, the, the 
I don't know, I, I couldn't actually do it, but I had those thoughts of, man, if something happened to me, I wouldn't care because I'm dealing with so much torment. I'm here to tell you that's not who you are. I was choosing to listen to a, the other voice in that, in that season of my life. And as, she, as soon as I said, you know what, God, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I truly surrender. He's like, man, finally you knocked. Finally. Finally you knocked so that I can actually come into your situation and do what only I can do. Because you're trying to be the one that heals you and that's not how it works. I'm the healer, you're not. Knock, son. Knock, daughter, let me in, let me in, let me in so I can do what only I can do. I, some of you need to hear this this morning, let him in, let him in, let him in so that now you can let others in. Because you will not be able to experience the blessing of, of kingdom community if you don't have that kingdom relationship with God. It all starts there, it all starts there. But are the people around you making you sharper or are they hindering your growth as a Christian? Guys, I had to walk away from some friendships because they weren't going where I was going and I wasn't gonna allow them to hold me back from going to where God was calling me to. Doesn't mean I don't pray for them. Doesn't mean I don't still love them. But watch this. If Jesus only did what he saw the Father do and he only said what he heard the Father saying, then God was doing something different with Peter, James, and John that he wasn't doing with the other disciples. He had a closer, intimate relationship with those three. Does that mean that God didn't love the other ones? No. It just means that he was going to do something with those three that only those three could accomplish. Some of you were called to be in close relationship with individuals for a season, but those individuals couldn't come into your new season and for you to allow yourself to actually go and grow from glory to glory. So God says, no, I, I've utilized you. You planted seeds that will bring a harvest, but now I have this other group of people for you that you need to fully embrace and fully receive. But some of us are bringing past pains into our present promise. And you can't step into the present promise if you're still struggling with your past pains. You need to let this stuff go. You need to let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Please, please let it go. Please, please. Because your freedom is found in Christ, not your past. I love how Paul says, nothing can separate you from my love. Your present, your future, angels, demons, lows, highs, doesn't even acknowledge your past. Why? Because it's dealt with. It's dealt with. You're the only one reminding God about your past. <laughs> you're, the, you're confusing heaven every time you pray. Every time you go to him, you're like, oh God, I'm so sorry I did that. I'm so sorry I did that five years ago. God, I'm so sorry I did that. He's like, well, what do you, what'd you do? Because when I forgive you, I truly forget. Some of us are just comparing the way that we forgive. And we think that that's the way that God forgives. That's not how God forgives. God forgives, and it's like if you're using a whiteboard, and I'm writing on a whiteboard, and I erase, erase the whiteboard, you're still going to see a little faint image of what was once there. That's, somehow, that's sometimes how we forgive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe it clean, but I'm, I'm not going to forget. God burns that whiteboard and rolls out a brand new one. And there's now no evidence of once what, what once was. There's no evidence. <laughs> the price has been paid. So if you've come to the Lord and you've surrendered yourself to the Lord and you've laid these things down at his feet, stop picking it up on your way out. We do that all the time. We, we experience God. We receive his forgiveness. We receive his love. And we're like, oh my gosh, if only I could just live here. He's like, you can. Oh gosh, if only this doesn't have to try, go home with me. It doesn't have to. Oh God. And we experience him for who he is in, in a church service. But then right before we leave, we're like in our car. And we're like, oh, you know what? I forgot something real quick. And we run back up to the altar. And we're like, yep, I'm going to pick up my anxiety again because I'm not quite ready to let go of it. Because it's actually become a false comforter for you. 
Because like when I was years and years and years of anxiety and depression, it became all that I knew. So at first, when it was gone, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. It's what I ran to when I was scared. I allowed him to isolate me. I was born in the dark. (laughs) No, stop believing that. You don't have to be that guy. You don't have to be that woman. You can actually be set free. Let yourself be set free. Some of you are completely free, but you're, in cho- you're choosing to live in this, this cage when the door's wide open. The door's wide open. Your chains have been set free. You're no longer bound. Jesus is like, awesome, let's go. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> I ran out of that grave. And he's like, where are you? I thought we were running out of the grave. Oh man, I guess I'm, guess I'm gonna have to go where you are because he is where we are. So what does he do? He walks back, he sits next to you and he's like, guess this is where we're gonna be for a while. When we don't have to, we can run out, but you're choosing to sit here and I'm gonna honor your choice. But the price of freedom has been paid. But we're choosing isolation. We're choosing bondage. Now it's time to step out of that cage today. It's time to say enough is enough. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. I'm no longer going to be defined by what has happened to me. I'm no longer going to be defined by what was spoken over me. I'm no longer going to identify with someone that I'm not. Because God has made you a new creation. The old is past and the new has come. There's a big percentage of the body of Christ that doesn't believe in miracle signs and wonders, but they resurrect their old man every day. I don't believe in resurrection. Well, you're literally raising your dead self from the dead every day. You're putting that corpse on your back and you're trying to walk around saying you're free when everyone's like, okay, (laughs) you're free. God wants you to be truly free. He wants you to say, you know what? It's time to finally believe what we say we believe. Young and old, those little kiddos back there, how many of you are so thankful that these kiddos are being taught things that it's taken 25, 30, 40 years for you to step into? Where is that generation going to be 25 years from now? God has paid this price for you. He wants you to be so free. He wants you to fully love who you are. Why don't we just stand up? Because I'm just going to like wholesale healing as we wrap this up, just for the sake of time. Unfortunately, man, I wish I could be with you guys for a whole nother week. You guys have been absolutely incredible. And I so believe in what God is doing here. And I know that God is moving in your midst. And I know that if Anna and I have the pleasure of coming back, we will see you guys grow and go from glory to glory. Some of you will come back to me saying, Pastor Matt, when you prayed, when you prayed that Sunday morning, man, I came in and I was bound. I was bound up. I was saying all the right things, but it wasn't who I truly was. But I can look into your eyes now and say, I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> just put our eyes on Jesus. I don't want to get, you know, systematic and you have to bow your heads and close your eyes. If that's what you feel like you need to do, that's amazing. If you just want to look at him, whatever you have to do to just get your eyes so fixed on him, get your eyes fixed on him because he's the only one that can direct your path. He's the only one that can heal your broken heart. So if that's you in this room where you're like, man, I can identify with so much of what you're saying. Man, I've been trying to do the right thing and I've been trying to say the right stuff, but if I'm honest, I'm just overwhelmed. I, I'm tired. I, 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 I don't know what to do. I, I feel like just giving up. If that's you, choose to just faintly knock and let God do what only he could do. If that's you and you just want to respond, I just ask you just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. God, I thank you right now for every person in this room. 
God, I thank you that you knew who would be in this room at this very moment. And God, I thank you that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. X marks the spot, you're it. Because his spirit lives within you. Just place your hand on your heart right now. God, I thank you for every heart in this room. God, and if there's anything, anything that is in us, that is not in you, God, I ask that you first would just highlight it to us. You would show us what it is so we can now take care of it and say, God, no more, no longer am I gonna continue to live this way when I'm supposed to live your way. God, right now, I just lay that down at your feet as a beautiful sacrifice. So God, I just thank you right now for filling your children from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet now with your spirit, God. Holy Spirit, come and do what only you could do. God, I thank you right now that hearts are being healed from situations and things that have happened years ago. And, and you, don't need, you don't need to have a 12-step program to get back to Jesus. I'm not against those things in some ways, but sometimes we can get a little crazy with our processes when we just need to take one step to him. One step to him. He makes all things new. And if you're that person that's sitting in that cell, I encourage you right now to just look up. Realize that the door is wide open and you don't have to choose to sit there any longer, any longer. I know for the sake of time that we have to, we have to get going to the airport. Unfortunately, I, I don't want to, to be honest. But you're not here to encounter me. You're not. If God is doing something in your heart right now, and you want to take a step to him right now, I'm gonna, if it's okay, I'm just going to open up these altars and say, come, come, come. If you need rest, come, come. If you're that one just faintly knocking on the door, come and allow him to do what only he could do. Do what only he could do. And I know sometimes we're in a room like this, it's like, what's everybody going to think? Who cares? Who cares? If we can't truly be vulnerable in this setting, you'll never be vulnerable with anyone. So God, I just ask right now that you would just begin to even just knock on their hearts, God. Knock on their hearts. Sometimes it's just for one and my heart celebrates that because that's how God loves us. If he sent a couple from Pennsylvania for one soul, it's all worth it. But I know that God is touching hearts all through this room and you don't have to step forward to show that God is doing something. God can move right in your seat, but I just don't wanna have to rush your afternoon because I know I've spent some time at the altar just kneeling in his presence and allowing God to just love me, love me, love me. And then by the time I left and got up, I felt like a complete new person. So I'm gonna ask Anna to actually come up and also close in prayer. And then we'll hand things over to Ethan. I just hear the Lord just singing over you guys. So I'm just gonna release that. I just hear him singing. I give you rest. I give you peace. I give you rest. I give you peace. Jesus, we just thank you that you are the one that we can go to when we need rest, when we, we need peace for our weary souls, Father. Jesus, I just release, I just affirm everything that you just put through, Matt, today, Father God. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that it would be a word that sticks to the hearts of the people in this place, God. That they would never be the same again. So Jesus, we just thank you for who you are to this house. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are to this house and that you're, it's just glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. He is taking you somewhere. So Jesus, we just thank you for your plans. They're good plans to prosper this house. 
purpose in this house. So Jesus, we ask your blessing on every heart in this place today. We ask you to seal it right now in Jesus' mighty name.